All right, here we go. In this video, we're going to talk about finding the probability of compound events. So we are going to be measuring the chance of two or more events happening. So for example, what is the probability of the spinner landing on yellow and the die landing on three? Now, since this uh, probability is not going to be based on any previous results, I know that I'm going to be finding the theoretical probability. So the number of ways the event can occur to the total possible outcomes. Now, a way that I can represent my total possible outcomes is to draw out a sample space. Okay, a sample space. Usually you'll see a sample space as a table or a uh, tree diagram. And you may also see a sample space as just a list. Okay. For this example, I'm going to create a, I'll create a table, okay? So what I'm going to do is I can, I'm just going to represent the entire possible outcomes that can happen when I roll or when I spin the spinner and when I roll the die. So let's see what can all happen. I can spin a, the spinner and it land on red and I can roll a one. I could spin the spinner, it lands on red, and I can roll a two, a red, and a three. I could spin a red and roll a four, red, and roll a five. I could spin a red and roll a six. Okay, so as you can see, I could do this for each color. I could spin a blue and land on one, blue and two, blue and three, blue and four, blue and five, and so forth. So I'm just going to continue this process until I represent all of the possible outcomes. Yep, and I skipped a number. This should be four. All right. And we got red, blue, green, I need yellow. One. Now this could also be considered a list if you want to. I didn't really create a table. Like I said, I was going to do. But anyway, you get the point. I have all of my total possibilities when I spin this spinner and when I roll this die represented right here in, in my sample space. Okay, so now I can easily look at my sample space and write the ratio of the number of ways the event can occur. So the spinner landing on yellow and the die rolling on three, that can happen one way to the total possible outcomes. And I see that I have one, two, three, four, five, six. There's four rows of six possible outcomes. So that means I have 24 total possible outcomes. So 1 24. So this would be the probability of this spinner landing on yellow and the die landing on 3. Alright, now we can also solve this using another method. Okay, we are also we can also multiply the probability
of each event. Okay, so the first event was the spinner landing on yellow. And I see that there's one yellow to four total possible outcomes. So this would be one fourth times the probability of this die landing on three. There's one three out of six total sides. Okay, so it's one over six. Okay, don't put three over six just because we're looking for the die to land on three. There's only one three on this number cube. So that's why we have to have a one here, not a three. All right, so we multiply this out. Uh, we're going to multiply a fraction straight across. One times one is one. 4 times 6 is 24, and as you can see, we get the same answer. So those are two ways of finding the probability of compound events, creating a sample space and multiplying the probability of each event. All right, and there you go, probability of compound events. Thanks for watching.